hey even if you know the solution to this particular question yet if you're interested on why certain molecules prefer the axial position or certain substituents prefer the axial position over the equatorial position then watch this video till the end because i have got you some good research evidence as well so the question initially that i had asked first of all this was qotd question of the day okay number four uh, nearly after six months i think uh, i have made the fourth question the third question was sometime in the month of june 2021 so sorry for the delay uh, anyway coming to this question over here uh, the question says arrange the following according to the decreasing a values for mono substituted cyclohexanes okay so actually if if someone tells you a values a values are basically used for mono substituted cyclohexanes okay so this statement that i've mentioned over here it is more or less redundant okay because a value is generally used for mono substituted cyclohexanes only okay so in case in the examination you come across this a value term that stands for mono substituted cyclohexane okay now what does this a value tell us the a value tells us that the what is the preference of a substituent of of equatorial position over the axial, axial position okay that the substituent prefers equatorial position or the substituent prefers axial position so basically let me tell you in short the greater the a value okay greater a value sorry uh, greater a value basically means the higher the a value the more the preference for equatorial position okay more is the preference for equatorial position okay more preference for i'll just write equatorial so basically if you see over here you know um, now why first of all some of you might also be confused that why groups will prefer equatorial position because in equatorial position this is my equatorial position there is more space available in the axial position what happens is this substituent basically you might have heard about one three diagonal interactions okay so these are steric repulsions that are faced by the substituents due to the hydrogen present over here and over here so these are called one three diagonal interactions okay one three diagonal interactions and these are repulsive in nature so there's a repulsion between this group and the hydrogens because of which it is it was considered that the a value is only dependent upon steric factors but i will tell you that it is not solely dependent on the steric factors there are some other factors also that come into the picture okay so now if you look at this uh, this this question over here you have to arrange in the a values of these four substituents okay and a value basically what does it measure it measures the free energy difference between the equatorial and the axial substituent basically if the molecule is uh, if the substituent is in equatorial position and if the substituent is in axial position what is the difference in the energy so greater is the difference in energy that means uh, the equatorial form is more stable so the greater the difference so the a value will be larger okay so in short again i'll summarize higher the a value more is the preference for equatorial position okay now if you look over here if you if you see this cyclohexyl group is very very bulky right if you have a cyclohexyl group it is very very bulky so that by, by itself tells you that in the case of cyclohexyl group the equatorial position is much more favored okay that is why cyclohexyl will have the highest a value okay then if you go to the next substituent if you see over here we have sme then we have nitrile and then we have H, um, hgcl so again you can you can think or you can kind of like correlate that methyl again is a bulky group right because we have a carbon and then to the carbon three hydrogens are attached so this is also going to be bulky in nature so of course this will also prefer the equatorial position that is why this <clears throat> will also have a high a value not as high as cyclohexyl because as you can imagine cyclohexyl is even bulkier right so that is why sme will have a slightly lower value so then we have sme okay all right after that we have nitrile now nitrile you have to understand the carbon over here in nitrile is sp hybridized okay so if i draw the chair conformation again over here you can see that what will happen is that if i draw this nitrile group it is a linear in nature so what will happen these one three diagonal interactions they would be comparatively less okay they would be comparatively less so that is one of the reasons why the nitrile will have a, a small a value and surprise surprisingly this hgcl okay this has a negative a value so if it has a negative a value what does that mean that the hgcl substituent basically prefers the axial position over equatorial position now that is very surprising because mercury or if, if you look at the substituent hgcl it is not that it is very small 
then why is HGCL preferring axial position? So it is not just about steric hindrance. In fact, there are some attractive forces that, that are also um, cons that are also you can say um, playing a role in deciding whether the substituent will occupy the axial and the equatorial position. Okay, and this is where the London dispersive forces come into the picture. Okay, now you might have studied it in class 8, 9th London dispersive forces. They are basically forces that are generated due to induced dipoles. Okay, they are not permanent dipoles. So like non-covalent interactions like hydrogen bonding, you might have heard about. They are very strong interactions or even uh, charge transfer, you know, kind of interactions that also you have studied in, in organic chemistry. But London dispersion forces, you might not have, um, you know, come across um, in your studies, in your, you know, in your coursework or something of that sort. But London dispersion forces are very, very important when it comes to considering the A values. So A values, like most of you had thought, it is not just about steric hindrance, but also about um, London dispersion forces. So recently, if you see over here, there have been uh, a very recent article in 2021 that was published in um, Journal of American Chemical Society, which is one of the very prestigious journals in the field of chemistry. So they had actually published on the London dispersion and how it helps in redefining the A values. All right. All right. And this is where that is the reason why this HGCL molecule over here, it is, you know, considered to be um, what do you call uh, it is considered to have a negative a value the reason and in fact in 1974 if you see there was an article also published in tetrahedron letters in fact this article i am trying to or i am going to cover in science sizzler okay i'll be covering this in science sizzler um those of you who do not know science sizzler is basically a recent series that i have started wherein i discuss uh, research articles latest research articles all right so in 1974 there was an article published in tetrahedron letters uh, sorry, <laughs> tetrahedron letters, which basically talked about um, uh, why, w w w like, why, you know, cyclohexyl mercury derivatives prefer the axial position. And they had also written over here that there's some attractive interaction, as you can see, there's some attractive interaction between the axial substituent and the hydrogens. Okay, so this attractive, subs this attractive, um, you can say, Interaction is due to the London dispersion forces as was published in the recent article in 2021 in JAX. Okay, so what basically happens is this carbon mercury bond over here. Okay, if you look at this carbon mercury bond, this is highly polar in nature. So there's an induced dipole that is generated in these hydrogens over here. Okay, basically this this is polar, this bond is highly polarizable. So there's a there's you can say it leads to generation of a dipole between this carbon hydrogen and this carbon hydrogen bond and there's some kind of attractive forces because of which HGCL prefers the axial position. Okay. And another reason is that this carbon mercury bond is a very long bond. Okay. If you look at the length of the bond, it is very long. So what happens because of this length of the bond also, what you will observe is that this is further away from this, you know, it is further away from the hydrogens. So that is why the steric repulsions are also less because of the length of the bond and at the same time due to the attractive forces, the London dispersion forces, um, overall HGCL prefers to occupy the axial position over the equatorial position. Alright, so anyway, I hope uh, you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, please like this video and if you found this particular information, particularly the one that I shared in the second half of the video uh, related to HGCL and you want to share it with your friends, colleagues junior seniors um, please feel free to do that um, and yeah that's about it um, if uh, you have any queries um, related to some concept some topic um, let me know in the comment section i will try my best to answer it through the comments thank you for watching i will see you in the next video very soon hey guys so i'm a verified educator on an academy and along with that i'm also available on the unacademy plus platform where I'm taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you're interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you're not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform. Alright.